All right, this morning we're at uh, DM Precision in Dunville. Uh, it's a CNC machine shop. They make a lot of satellite parts and other small parts. And against their better judgment, they showed interest in the C10. So they offered to make the intake plenums to attach the LS to the German. So let's check it out. Nice. Here she is, 1964 C10. We're gonna put the Germax and the two-wheel drive Allison in there, making it a legitimate tow truck. Cheapest air ride control system on the internet. The liquid urethane, you can make your own bushings. The only issue that we're having is the math. <laughs> this will be a first, stick around. You see that shows, you tell me. The intake manifold's getting cut right now. Now we gotta build our exhaust manifold and figure out where our steering is gonna go. And as long as the sniper is able to handle the amount of boost that a diesel puts out, we'll be laughing. Hey, George. Good. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? <laughs> that is awesome. Are we live? <laughs> we are live. Okay, I will show you the other side. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got this side all done. Right on. So I scribed out where that would be. Roughly, yeah. Uh, center um, to that port. Yeah, so we got our groove in there nicely for our silicone. So that's, uh, that's the little oops. Ah, uh, So I was yeah. thinking we could weld it. Okay. And then I can duck it again down to the thickness. Yeah. Um, ah, that's no big deal. The O-ring grooves in. Okay. The undercuts. We might have to Y these, like B. Right, right. I'd rather do little than going big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yes. You, so, you can set the bolt in, right? So, so the point of these is to take the bolt and be able to stick them in. Right, and then we got to tighten those, and then yeah, and then leave this nice and big so that so that's not necessarily where this is going to end up. That center, yeah, center, but but I'm just I just did that just so you'd know where center was. Okay, oh, very nice. All right, so we have our adapter back from uh DM Precision, but it's a little bit tight just on the side of the pump here, so I just need to notch it a little bit. I'm gonna put it in my CNC and... Nice. Both holes line up. Very cool. So d &M, what he did was he etched the ports from the Germax heads to the center of my LS heads. So this is centered between the two 
um, ports on the Duramax. Now I need to create a port to go from here and here to here. Now um, I didn't want him to do any more or start drilling any of the holes because I have to make sure that my runners don't interfere with any of my fuel lines. I have to have these sitting here to not interfere with the intake plenum on this side and the fuel lines from the CP3. They cut me this again because I damaged the one, so that was stupid on my part. It was after eight o'clock. Even still, this is a hundred times better than the stock intake plenum. And as long as the sniper is able to ha handle the amount of boost that a diesel puts out, we'll be laughing. But we were doing some R&D for Holly and letting them know how much their intake plenums are good for. They've been tested to 15 PSI. They will be tested to about 50, so. <laughs> so I had DNM cut my um, accesses to the bolts as small as possible because I didn't know if they were gonna interfere with the flange or where those are in relation. So now that I know that I've got my, my adapters will bolt in, clearance the CP3 pump, um, I'm gonna add my fuel lines and then I can move my um, intake plenum to where they aren't interfering or touching anything. I can start connecting the single hole from the sniper to the dual hole on the Duramax head because it's a four valve per piston rather than two. This is the 100 PSI or so coming from the fast system to the CP3, which will turn that into 20,000 PSI and feed the common rail of the injector. So we've got our main fuel coming in right here, which goes to our CP3 pump, comes out of the pump and goes to this block, which evenly distributes it. We've got our fuel pressure sensor to tell the computer that we have enough pressure to fire the injectors. From there, it gets split off into the two. We've got them running from one bank over to the passenger bank, which fires these four injectors, and this bank feeding the driver's side injectors. This is the uh, fuel uh, pressure regulator. So there's a giant spring in here, which um, gives the proper pressure, which is somewhere around 20,000 for the injectors, and the rest gets leaked off. This used to be a T, which had three fittings coming in. I have to sneak this between my runners and then I'll put my T down below here. Once I have my intake bolted down securely where I want at the right angle, I can do my return lines. I have my return line coming here bolted to the back of the head as well. And I need to have the return from the injection pump, the return from my front of my cylinder head injector return. The other cylinder return comes from here and then the return from the um, main pressure. With all those returns, they'll go back to the tank, um, but I, and those are low pressure, so I can use rubber hose like they did right here. Um, I'm gonna try and use steel, bend them up real nice. I wanna stick my main harness, which is uh, these two plugs on the very bottom underneath here. Um, if I've got room, I'll put them on the top. I don't think I have the room. The only problem with that is if this ever leaks, it's gonna leak right onto my wiring harness. Not ideal, maybe I'll put a cover on it, but this needs to be bolted down and these lines need to be secured as well. We'll worry about that after we finish our intake plenum, which is going to sit like this. We got one right here, like this. I absolutely love it because there's some projects that were just fighting me and this one just really seems to come together. The main, the main fuel line sneaks between these two runners and then the return is nicely hidden between these two runners. Everything else, the entire fuel system gets hidden underneath the, the main intake plenum. So when you pop the hood, you see this and it's just bam, pops you in the face all that messy wiring, all that ugly fuel lines, all of that is gone. And I'm just loving how this is turning out. Imagine a nice shiny turbo right here, another shiny turbo right here, some nice piping going to two intercoolers in the front. And this is the best part. This cylinder head has a turbo, which will feed air to my intercooler. 
it will pass through the other intercooler, get fed into this intake, which the runner points it back at that cylinder. Um, so this boost pressure and this wastegate is monitored by its own boost pressure from that side, the way that it all works together. It was like this was designed for this Duramax. I'm so excited. Now I know that this kind of fits, my fuel lines are gonna work. It wasn't up until this point that I knew that it was actually gonna work. <laughs> and that's super cool. Once we start running our runners, then um, I can make these smaller. I can make bigger access holes to my bolts that hold it down. I had DNM make these as small as possible in case it interfered with the runners. Um, but um, as soon as I'm done all that, they're gonna take it back. They're going to redeck the top and the bottom, clean up all of my edges so it looks nice and neat and professional like it was meant to be. And we are gonna have a one of a kind Duramax swap 64 C10 bagged tow track. Here we go. All right, what are you doing, Andy? Just taking apart the gauge right now. Um, gonna pop this out. Uh, we have a new Teletronics uh, gauge cut that uh, just came in. Uh, so we're gonna pop that out, put the new one in, hopefully reinstall it and it'll look nice. Taking out the clutch pedal, clearing everything out in the back here. Took the steering column out. Uh, new steering column's coming in. From I did it, yeah. While everything is clear, get this floor cleaned up. Make it look brand new again. <laughs> no, we're not. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Making that functionable. Uh, we'll, we'll weld in some floor panels. Um, we'll sound barrier the whole thing. We're going to have the exhaust coming like right by the foot well. So it's going to be hot. Like your feet are going to cook. And I don't think we're going to have AC in it right away. So we'll insulate the floor and we'll insulate the muffler. The muffler is going to be basically right underneath the, uh, the, the seat. And then the stack is going to come right in behind you. You have to sweat. You can't have a rest of the patina and have air conditioning and be, be comfortable. But we're going to make it as comfortable as we can. Um, we're going to put a nice interior in it. We're going to get rid of these door panels. Get rid of this fuel tank. We probably don't need that exploding behind uh, exhaust right here. Just exploding. We have to weld in a new tunnel. So we might have to buy a wheelbarrow or something. Something. I got a wheelbarrow at the yard. <laughs> All, right. All right, wheelbarrow for the transmission tunnel. Get some carpet and everything in there. The steering column it was pretty sloppy. We did take the flange off of it. We don't have the I did it uh, steering column yet, but we will. We should do something with that. What should we do with that? Uh, well, either maple syrup or beer. <laughs> <laughs> let's go maple syrup. Let's, let's go, go maple syrup. Let's go maple, maple syrup. syrup. Big hose coming from the back. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, it's Andy here. Just so you know, I pulled out all those switches except for one. Now Rich is going to take the glory and pull the whole cluster out. Okay? Shh. All right, see you, Rich. <laughs> see, you, see you, Andy. Thanks for all your help, man. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. I, uh, clean up all the scrap from the inside there, so. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll keep going at it uh, next week. Okay, sounds good, buddy. See you, man. All right, so the cab's back on again. Man, does that ever look good? Um, we got a little bit of fitment issues in the front. We'll definitely have to roll those fenders to tuck those massive tires underneath there. But we'll worry about that another day. It's close enough that it's gonna work. I won't be able to drive it with the air suspension down, but that's okay. I did I did lift up on the frame and they, they turn nicely inside there. So that's not an issue. I think I'm gonna cut the wheel wells right out. Um, go right up to this bar here and um, because I, I have to cut a big hole there for the exhaust is going to go around this way and then go nicely under beside the frame. I have to bring the turbos forward a little bit. Um, one to uh, miss my steering column and then I have to put my hydro boost there as well too. So that little brake booster is going to go. We're going to have a nice uh, um, hydro boost on there. That would be on the GM trucks. Then we can start running our brake lines and stuff. I can put a 38 inch wide radiator in there. I'm gonna cut that out and we'll order a radiator for it. Um, I gotta figure out how to mount those so I can start running my headers um, and my collector and stuff. But um, yeah, oh, so beautiful. And again, camera doesn't do it justice, but man, oh man, it's crazy that uh, it's kind of coming together. 
Here we go. All right, we got our cab there. We got our engine in there. And to figure out where our steering is gonna go, I got an I did it steering column. So nice. Uh, column shift is still the automatic. Um, so that comes with steering linkages and some brackets. Perfect. All right, so this is so nice because everything is tight, all new bearings. We've got tilt steering, a slider to allow you to make it telescoping-ish. You're gonna love that tilt, I'm sure. So we're gonna tape this off so we don't scratch it, put it in the firewall, and then we can connect our steering shaft. Here we go. So we're back at DM. George, Thanks. you making how you making out? Good, good. Yeah. Things are plugging away. Okay, so I took the block back from him. Um, after I got it, we left the, the holes nice and small on the on where the bolts go, just because I didn't want to interfere with our our new intake. And I had to figure out exactly where this went. Once we did that, I kind of butchered <laughs> butchered a hole just to show him where I wanted the runners. Now you're able to kind of map this and drill yeah. the other ones? Yeah, I'm okay. going to work on it, drill through, get rid of most of it for you. Okay. So it's not as bad. Okay. But yeah, that's what all this is. <laughs> yeah. It'll get there. We'll get it. <laughs> Beautiful. So now we can get at the bolts. We can do the full swing on the, this will be the top. And then the holes at the bottom, I can go in with a wobble socket and tighten those on. So, beautiful. Just the only thing is the wall, the thickness here, you're, it's iffy for the runner. Oh, okay. Because that's where the port is. Right, close. right. Okay. But on this one, you've got it angled away, so you should be good. Yeah. Awesome. We'll leave you to it. Thanks, okay. man. I'm excited. No. Yeah, it's going to turn out good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got a really good welder too yeah. to fix the other intake. So he, he promises the welds on the Holly intake are gonna look good again. So and then I'm gonna stop touching it. <laughs> so I set it up this way with a stop. Uh little jack here to hold as I'm pushing down. And a couple bars of steel up here. So it's being held here using this as a stock and then I'm just using these long pieces of steel to help make it rigid up here so it doesn't vibrate. I got one side of uh, the ports done as you can see. I'm gonna flip it around and do the next side. As you can tell, I've set up with the one that Rich has already ported, so I could kind of figure out center line. So I use an edge finder, I pick up the edge, two edges to find my center in Y, and then I draw up on CAD, this is at 48 degrees, so I can figure out from this edge to center line, which is I think 3.365 I think it is center line, and then I just go down one inch and three quarters de depth. So I'm just setting this up exact same way as the other side. Clamps to support it, little jack underneath, and that's about it. Okay, so I got my Plenum back from DNM. Now DNM makes satellite parts for um, satellites, <laughs> and they really don't want to be doing this as uh, other than anything but a favor for a guy in town. Um, so uh, right now they're actually going full tilt, making ventilators, as the whole situation is. So I have these back just the way that I got them. So um, they weren't going to put them on a five axis for me. 
but they did get most of the drilling done so that the uh, the plenums are or the, the the paths are somewhat close. So what I did was I gave them one with an intake runner already done. So I did I did this one, and you can see how it's not it's not centered in the hole. I'm I am about a uh, half inch off to one side. So what they did was they were able to measure how far I drilled in and then they took the other one and the other three holes and went as far as they could making the holes as big as they could and now I have to take old school um, just a bit uh, a little bit of ATF to keep it lubricated and make my own passages. I'm gonna port these and um, put them on the engine. We're gonna get close, as close as we possibly can. We can come back to this once they're up and running again. And then, uh, but in the meantime, we can still fire up the truck. We'll do some drilling, bolt them on, put the turbos in place to see what it looks like. Here we go. So just grab these off Amazon, make sure that you get the aluminum bit. And I found that um, if you dip them in a little bit of ATF and, and uh, do your grinding with that, then they last a lot longer and they don't gum up either. Um, just like anything, heat kills them, but for 90 bucks, pretty decent little kit. Um, that is roughly how it is going to look under the hood of the truck. Um, we've got our intake plenums bolted down on either side. Um, I had to do a little bit of fabricating with my um, CNC machines, my very intricate CNC machines to have the plenums fit around the CP3 pump. But we got it. I'm going to try and move the engine ahead forward by sliding the mounts ahead on the front cross member there. And then I think I can pull the cab back off again and start working the fuel lines, making sure that all the clearances are proper for the fuel line. I got the one in there. It's kind of tight. Might have to notch the, the runner just a hair and that's all right. Turbos are going to sit right about there. I think I'm going to cut the inner fenders off. Okay, so we've got uh, a header in a box here from Lyles. Uh, we got some 90s, 45s, and U's, and then we have our flanges that we got from Oshkosh. And now we have to put it all together and do a nice neat header and make it look like it's done professionally. So um, since I've only ever done this never, um, I did put the passenger side together. So I've got this little thing here. We'll kind of bend that up to where I think the turbo should sit. Then we can kind of know where our flange is going to sit. And then, yeah, it'll work. Watch. That can go like there. And then this needs to go over here. And then I just have to bend the tubes. That's it. something like this and that didn't turn out too bad I'm happy with that um, basically we want our runners to all be the same length not hit the uh, suspension or the frame and to have the turbo mounted as closely to the exhaust as we can so the nice thing about this is we can tack everything together um, and then put it in our collector and before we weld our collector solid um, we have the option to kind of raise or lower or tilt the turbo if if we need to move it a little bit when it's all tacked together You just cut the tack off the flange and off of the collector and you can get around real nice without getting in the way of the individual ones then weld them solid onto here on the flange and then before you weld the collector on you can weld it from the top side here so make a nice little piece um, that fits in between there into that diamond shape then you can weld it um, from the top without the collector on there 
then pop the collector on, and then weld around the outside. So you've got nice uh, room for the wand every which way. Um, for now, we are going to tack my one plate back on here again with the turbo on there, whichever which way I like it. Um, I did cut this one at the top here to bring it down a little bit. So if it's too short, I can still put my other one on there, which is just uh, about three quarter inch to an inch longer. And then I can incorporate this one into the other side. So here we go. Okay, so now that I've got most of it tacked in place, um, I gave it to Vince and he very easily welded the um, easy ones to get at. If there was a gap, I told him not to um, weld it because now we can just snap the welds off, just crack them loose, tighten up the gap just a little bit. You should be able to squeeze it that eighth of an inch one way or another. It might look tight when you're tacking it together and then you look to the other side and you got a big gap there like that. So if you're able to just run the grinder through it and just tighten up that gap just that little bit, redo the ones on the outside, you got a nice little header. Here we go. One, one intercooler facing with the with the intake pipe down. So it'll come out of the discharge through the intercooler on the top side here and then into this intake. This one will go underneath that one. The other intercooler will flip the other way. So basically they're, they're like this. So all four pipes are gonna be coming in the same little area, then that will have to come up underneath and then come up and feed this intake. Oh, super cool. We got lots of room for our downpipe to come out the back, curl down, stay to the left of the frame, and then the muffler goes underneath the cab and then comes up behind. So I don't have to worry about that too much. Um, the frame rail on the bottom of the cab is hitting the frame now. So we're gonna notch that because I wanna slide the cab ahead as uh, up to an inch and a half. Just need a tiny bit more turning radius on the front here. Um, I can slide the engine ahead a little bit. We're gonna do the, try to get as much of that as possible. The way I did the headers is I can still move it ahead that little bit because the clearances aren't that tight. It's not as tight as a Mercedes, so it gives us a lot, lot of options. Um, we've got our flex light radiator. We'll talk about that next video along with the transmission cooler. I think once we've got um, everything kind of sorted where we want, um, I'm going to take the cab back off again, and then we'll get it running in the next video. I think next video we can get it running. Um, we're kind of on halt for parts. I think I have all the parts that I need to get it running. Probably not enough to finish the intakes. Um, but uh, we can at least fire it up and then start working on the uh, floor pans and the interior for it as well. So um, thanks for watching guys. A lot more cool stuff coming up on this old girl and hopefully Power Tour will be up and running again by June, but we'll have to play that by ear. Um, comment down below uh what you guys think of the project so far and uh definitely check out our website as well thebossgarage.com um where we uh where you can upload the stuff that you're working on remember get out there work on it get filthy get your hands dirty drive it enjoy here we go